I am honored to introduce UNLV Hospitality's very own Dr. Murray McKenzie, PhD. Dr. McKenzie, salute. Hi, thank you, Karen, for that introduction, and uh, welcome everybody to the Marriott Kitchen here at Hospitality Hall at the UNLV. And I'm delighted to be able to be present with you today because tomorrow is Mother's Day, and so we are we're probably going to celebrate a little bit of wine and uh, other other beverages as well. So we thought we'd start this with a little bit of uh, fundamental wine wine tasting, and then um, I'll take you through four. Uh, entry level wines, two white, one rose, sparkling wine, and then one red wine. Now, some of you have gone to Total Wine, and I thank Total Wine for helping uh, the uh, Alumni Association out for this because uh, they were the ones who have this wine in stock. So, if you do like this wine and you haven't tasted it before, then please go and uh, try it and buy it through Total Wine because uh, they provide all our wine here. So. So um, a little bit uh, about myself, um, I, um, I have only just arrived here uh, over the last year and a half now. I have been at the uh, hospitality college here and I teach uh, food and beverage and wine is one of the areas that uh, I like to teach in and others are operational management to do with restaurant management. So we're training students to go out and work in the industry and the industry at the moment is taking a wee bit of a hit. but. I know it's going to come back and it's going to come back stronger than ever before. We are putting things in place and I know everyone's doing that to make sure uh, that all the criteria are met when we do open up again. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, before we do start tasting wine, there's a few things that we need to know, some fundamentals about wine. Now, some of you will probably go out to restaurants and have no idea what's on the wine list. You look at it if, if it's a foreign language. And, uh, and that uh, will be uh, difficult because you don't know what your palate is or where these wines come from. And uh, the geographical location of all these wines is very, very important as well, as well, because some countries like France, Italy, will, and, and even Spain, they will place the area of production, the domain, the chateau even, before the name of the grape. And in fact, some of them do not even have the name of the grape on there. So it's a pretty complex business, this wine. And um, so I thought I'd start off with some uh, wine fundamentals. And you've got already the, uh, uh, the slides that will go with this. So you can go down through that and look at it as you go along. So the, the grape berry itself is a very interesting uh, piece of machinery, one would say. It's got lots of different characteristics in there. And uh, it's got obviously the, the skin on the outside, which gives the, the uh, tannin that you're looking for in red wine and the color that you look for in red wine. Internally, you've got all this pulp and the sugar. So the more sugar that you have in the grape, the more alcohol that you can produce. So you get countries that are warmer climates, warmer climates will give you more sugar, more sugar, more alcohol. So that's why most of your red wine has this higher alcohol content because most of the red wine is growing in warmer climates, except for a couple of others like uh, Pinot Noir and some other, other varietals, but they are mostly warmer climates. So like your Cabernet Sauvignon and um, your uh, Shiraz, those sorts of heavy uh, full bodied red wines come from a warmer climate your cooler climate wines have a higher acidity. So uh, uh, wines like your, your Sauvignon Blanc, um, your Riesling wines are in cooler climate, their alcohol is a little bit less. Um, and then you've got more acidity, but you need the acidity in the wine to be able to give that freshness about the wine. So it's very important to have that. So the other interesting thing is that your, your uh, grape berry, your grape berry for wine production is quite small, it's a little tiny packed full of uh, flavor and, uh, and um, uh, um, uh, aromas. Whereas your uh, grape that you have for your table grape is a lot bigger and juicier and uh, it's uh, more watery that you would say that would go into that. And so what usually happens is the, uh, the grapes are picked, they are then uh, taken to a, uh, a winery, they're crushed, 
it's a red wine, and then they uh, macerate, they put together the grape juice and also the skin together to give you the color that you want. Now we've got a, uh, a lovely um, rosé wine here. Now with this one here, this is also made from a, a red wine, but the grape skins don't stay on in contact with the grape juice or the must for any length of time, only a few hours to give it that lovely rosé color. Whereas uh, the other wine that I've got here, this uh, red, this red wine, you'll find that it's very deep and dark and the grape skins have stayed on that um, uh, juice for some time. So you can see that's, that's so important. So we've got these um, byproducts. Once the uh, yeast has started to eat away at the sugar, you've got then CO2 and alcohol, which is produced. And this is what we were looking for, the alcohol. So, um, and then, you know, there's lots of things about storage. People store them maybe in uh, oak barrels to give them quality of flavor, or if they're white wine, sometimes they store them in stainless steel to give them that freshness and fruitiness. So there's, there's lots of different characteristics about wine. And then you've got a, um, a, a climatic conditions. Now the French have this wonderful term called the terroir. Hello, welcome to the terroir. So, I mean, what, does, what is terroir? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a term that um, has got um, uh, a lot of things added in there. You've got the climate, whether it is uh, too, too hot or too cold. You've got then the, uh, the soil, what is in the ground that's going to affect the grape. And then also you've got the terrain, the, what they call the aspect, like you need to have a slope so you get more uh, delicious uh, sunlight. Sunlight gives you more alcohol, that's right, more alcohol and more, um, this is what you need. So, so you've got sometimes uh, mountain ranges close where you've got a rain shadow. So you've got on um, these, uh, let's say in Washington state, you've got the uh, um, Cascade Mountains, and then you've got the rain shadow coming from the Pacific, all the rainfalls on one side, other side is all dry, and that's where all the wine is. So now, so that's just a really brief run through about um, some climatic conditions and such, but it's important to know that when you start to taste wine. But everyone has a different palate. So everyone has a different, uh, let's say tolerance level. Some people are very tolerant. Um, I mean, if you were with us last night, we had a, a wonderful um, uh, demonstration here by Chef Chris and um, uh, I was his cameraman. So I, he is my cameraman tonight. And so I'm very tolerant. His, so I'm very tolerant of Chris tonight as he was tolerant of me last night, you could say, <laughs> yes. So you've got some people who are, are tolerant and um, they will have heavy, dark, black coffees and um, they will have chilies and hot foods, but you've got some people who are very sensitive and they will have very milky coffees or milky teas and, and they don't like too spicy of food. So everyone's palate is different. So what we're going to do is go through a little bit of tasting. So whatever you are tasting is, remember it's your palate. This is what you taste. So I'm going to start with this uh, particular wine here. Just move this over here. Uh, this, this wine here is uh, a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. I mean, what a great country, New Zealand, you see? I mean, an actual fact, this is, this is my nationality. I am from New Zealand. So um, I, um, this has got a screw cap, so very easy. Unscrew the cap, yes? And, there, and remember, uh, we are tasting the wine. So I'm only going to put a little bit in here and uh, I'm going to give some to Chris later because I don't know whether he's going to be able to move the camera around, you know? So, so anyway, so, so the first thing we have to do really when we, we, we get our wine is we, we don't drink it. Oh, no, 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 no drinking. So put that wine down. We have to look at it first of all, yes? So what we're going to do is, if you have something like a piece of white paper or something like that, you can put it behind the glass. And if you look down through that, you can see the color. Now, the color is going to come from either side of this wine. So when I look at this wine, I see, oh, it's a little bit 
lemony and a little bit green. So it's, you could say it's like lemon green and it's light color. So already we know a little bit about the varietal of wine it is because it's from a cooler climate, it's got a lighter color. If it was a darker orangey color like lem more darker golden lemon, it's from a warmer climate. So already. Now the next thing you do is you have to smell the wine, of course. Yes, we're not drinking it yet, so put that glass down. And now we're going to smell the wine. So, and when we smell it, we swill it around. Now you can, if you want to, put it down on the table. And, and uh, if you can see me here, down on the table with my uh, two fingers and then swill it around on the table like this. And this is perfectly acceptable to do. And the reason I'm doing that, I'll bring it back up again. The reason I'm doing that is to get some air into there. So you get a more pleasant nose to it. Now, if I'm smelling the wine from down here, it's got a strong pronounced aroma. If I'm smelling it further up towards my no nose, it's got a more lighter intensity. So, so you tell me if you drink, if some of you have purchased this wine and you've opened this wine and now you're smelling this wine, what do you smell in this wine? Sorry, I didn't hear that. You smell gooseberries, very good. And what else do you smell? And, oh yes, passion fruit, very good. Passion fruit, a little bit of bell pepper maybe in there as well and some citrusy. And then you get some people who say, I can smell the sea and it washes over the, over the sand as I'm walking down the beach on a summer's day and the seagulls are in the, in the distance and I can hear the crashing of the waves. And I'm thinking, why can't I have some of that wine? Well, you can, and here it is. So we've got this really like a little bit of stone fruit in here, yes? So now, so now I come to taste the wine. Now, when I taste the wine, I don't drink the wine. I put it into my, my mouth. Now, remember your tongue, a very, very important piece of equipment because the tip of your tongue has the, the sensory uh, components to have tasting for sweetness. The side of your tongue, you've got acidity. The back of your tongue, you've got more bitterness. In the center, you don't get very much. So the idea is when you put the wine in the mouth, you move it around everywhere and swill it around. So I'm going to taste this. And I'll spit my wine out. And if you can't spit it out in, the, in a spittoon that you have, just spit it on the floor or something. I'm sure someone will clean it up. So already, once I've left that wine, as I've swallowed it or it's, it, if I've spat the wine out, I get this high acid. It's, it's a dry wine. It's, it's acidic wine. It's got a high acidity, but there's also this wonderful fruit character in there some that passion fruit that comes through that we had before, a little bit of citrus, a little bit of that gooseberry that we had in there too, and a wee bit of herbaceous uh, character that we've got in that wine. So it, it's very refreshing. So this is such a great wine to have on a hot summer's day, sitting out uh, by your barbecue, uh, by, your, by the beach or by, by the pool and that, or a picnic. Uh, it has um, this wonderful freshness about it. So make sure you have it nice and cold. It's, it's wonderful when it's cold. Now, in, in my country, we drink gallons of this. Well, maybe not gallons, but we drink some. So it's a, a delicious wine. So we'll, we'll start with that one there. Now, the second one I've got is this uh, wine here from France. It's... Uh, a Vouvray from Loire, a lovely wine. So um, some of you uh, will probably uh, don't uh, know how to open wine. So I thought I'd better open this wine and help you out a little bit. So to show you how to do it. So um, every good person has a, a waiter's friend in their pocket. Now my waiter's friend is usually my, some, some girl that I met somewhere, but anyway, this, Tonight, it's going to be this is my waiter's friend. And you'll see in here, you've got three different components, a handle, a corkscrew, you've got a hinge, and you've got a knife here. So what we're going to do is, with the knife, and the knife's not sharp, 
you know, so it's not going to cut you, it's just serrated. I just take my thumb and go around the edge of the, the bottle, down the, down the base. Put that back, take out my corkscrew. Oh, no. Take off the, the cover, first of all. The cover should come straight off. What do I do with this? I'll put it in my pocket, you yeah? know? And then open up my corkscrew. Now with this corkscrew, I go right into the center. So you can see, I just go one. So I twist my hand and go around once. Your corkscrew should sit straight in the center of that. And now I corkscrew, I screw that down. You don't put the bottle on the table and twist the bottle around. This is just, you just don't do this. This is not something that you do. You twist the corkscrew. So how far down? You only go down to where the screw just ends. So just where the end of the, uh, the corkscrew is there. All right, and now these two little hinges, you've got two here. One goes up onto there. I'm right-handed, so my left hand goes around this, and then I pull one up, and I keep my arm up high, and then the next one goes down like this, and then I pull this one up. Pop, out it comes. Right, what do I do with this? Take the corks out. I then look at the cork. Just check the cork to see if it's all right. Do I put that in my pocket? No, I leave it on the table, and the, uh, the person who ordered the wine usually looks at that. Now, this wine here, we're going to try this wine. So this is a, a Vouvray. Now, Vouvray is the region it comes from in Loire. Vouvray is, is a city, and it's in the center part of Loire, actually. But the grape variety is a Chenin Blanc. So, as I said before, some countries don't put the grape variety on their wine. They will tend to just put the region or the domain it's from. So we do the same thing. We tilt that down as we did before. And if I show you here again, you'll see that I tilted it down and the, the color of that wine, and I tilt the, uh, the wine right up towards the air lip of the glass. And I can see that that color of that is so different from the color of my Sauvignon Blanc, yeah? Now, even by looking at those two wines together, I can see one is a lighter color than the other. This one here is a little bit more lemony in it. So it's a wee bit more sunlight, a wee bit more warmer climate that you've got here. So we swill it. We smell it. Oh, goodness me, that smells like just fantastic, like cooked pears, like something that um, stewed pears. It's got this wonderful flavor that comes from it. A little bit of blo blossom, a little bit of honey, um, and there's a little bit of citrus in there, but there are ripe fruits that come from that. They're not so steely as the other. Okay, now, this is um, a very nice wine. So. We now go to taste it. And remember, we're tasting, we're not drinking, all right? So. Mm. So now this wine here has got a different feel in the mouth. It's like, um, it doesn't taste, feel like it's like, uh, let's say, uh, semi-skimmed or reduced fat milk. It's more of a more of a full cream milk. So the body of the wine, now we're talking about the body. So the body of the wine is a little different. So we've got dry, we've got a little bit, uh, it's a little bit off dry actually. There's a wee bit of sweetness in that. It's a more riper fruit. So what we call off dry. So off dry, we've got then acidity level is like mm, medium a little bit higher, maybe medium plus acidity level that you've got there. And it's also got this lovely full body, do you see, like this. So we've got this uh, nice, um, wonderful, uh, creamy wine. So what I would put with that would be something like some nice uh, cream cheeses, like breeze and uh, uh, maybe some camembert cheeses. A little bit of creamy pastas and things like that. This this would be lovely. 
uh, that would go well with this wine. Now, this is my cameraman's favorite wine, in fact. So I'm not going to give them any of this. I'm going to drink it myself. Yeah, so. Mmm. Delicious. This is um, probably um, one of our best selling wines that we have at the, uh, the, one of our restaurants that we have over at the Stan Fulton building where we do our operational classes. So this is a, it's a wonderful wine. When you get to these two wines, these two white wines, you've got then, think about the finish of this wine. How long does that stay in your mouth? So does it just wash away and just fade away or does it linger and stay in your mouth? So you've got this wonderful uh, complexity that starts to happen with certain wines. So, and that comes with age. So you can see that I'm a very complex person because of my age, I've got so much to offer. So is the wine. So therefore, you've got then some uh, lovely wines that are, are going to uh, improve as they age. So uh, these two, uh, you'll find the Sauvignon Blanc because it's uh, uh, a screw cap. It's probably made for drinking now. So the, um, the Viognier, I would also drink this now as well, even though it's got a cork in it. Um, you'll find that white wines tend to age uh, not so as red wines. So you tend to age red wines longer because of the uh, higher, uh, some of the higher acidity and tannin levels. So, so now if we go to, um, I thought we would um, we'd probably open our, we'll leave our, our sparkling wine till last because um, it's Mother's Day and then we'll open that the last of all, yes? So uh, we'll go to our, our red wine. Now, if you notice, I haven't got any wines from North America here. These are all wines from different countries that I want you to try. So New Zealand, France. This one here is from South Africa. So this is a, a, pen, a penetage, a penetage. Now, it's got a screw cap as well. And uh, I'm going to use a bigger glass. Now, if you notice that the glasses here, they're all they're different sizes, yes? So I've got a, a white wine and I've got a red wine. The white wine glass is usually the, the smaller size of glass. The, uh, the red wine you've got is usually the bigger size of glass that you're looking for. All right, so here's our red wine. We'll put this in here. My goodness me, look at that. All right. So when you are pouring wine, just as you're pouring it, just twist, twist the, the, the bottle just a little bit as you're finishing off and lift it up and you'll find that the, uh, the drips won't go onto your nice tablecloth. So here's our, our red wine. Now, what do we do first of all? We look at it, very good. So we start to look at it first of all. We take our either a white napkin or something, and then we look at our wine, yes? Now, where do we look at this wine? We look at this wine, not at the edges, but we look at this wine through the center. So we're really looking at it down through the top, through here, and we lift it so it goes right up to the edge. And we have that watery rim. So we've got this now. As every man in this presentation knows, when you say to your lovely girlfriend, wife, the sky is blue, they're going to say, no, it's not. It's turquoise, it's ocean blue, it's scenic blue, it's river blue, it's never blue. So this is red, but no, it's not red. It is, it can be ruby red, garnet red, tawny red, depending on the age of the wine. So this wine is ruby. This is a ruby wine and I'm looking at this wine. And then with this one here, you can see more around the edge of the glass. And I didn't talk about that in the white wine because you can see this more. And if you have got it, you can see it, it just slowly dribbles down the side of the glass. And those are called legs. So you say, look at that guy, he's got good legs. All right. So you say this wine 
this wonderful wine it's got great legs and what does that tell you it tells you it's got it goes to the gym every day no it doesn't tell you that it tells you that this has got a higher amount of alcohol in it and and when some wines you've got sugar so this is probably higher alcohol but what do we know about wines from warmer climates more sugar more alcohol so this is from a warmer climate now this is a Pinotage wine so it's a a cross between a Pinot Noir and a Sancerre and in South Africa they call Sancerre Hermitage so you've got Pinotage and they uh, crossed this wine uh, uh, quite a number of years ago and they've got their own special wine so this is why I've got this wine I thought that you would might enjoy this now with this here we look at the color we know that it's it's ruby ruby red and, and when I look at the color, I look down through the center of the glass to see the intensity. Now with the white wines, you find it's, it's usually light, but with red wines, if I can see the stem at the end of the glass, I'm finding that it's then it's going to be medium, heavy, full, doesn't matter. The color will then, you can determine the darkness of it by looking down through the rim. So already I know this, this is a um, uh, obviously a red wine. It's ruby uh, color. It has got good legs. That means it's got higher alcohol and it's a medium intensity. So now I start by swinging it around again. And then, wow, on the nose, goodness me. Now, if any of you got this wine, what do you smell on this wine? Sorry, I didn't hear that. I think that you did smell ripped, probably dark plums, something like that. Maybe a little tobacco. Maybe a little bit of uh, darker fruits like berries and such, yes? It's got some, some wonderful aromas and a little bit of maybe wood like cedar. And, and those of you who haven't got this, you're probably saying, I wish I had that drink. Well, I'm, you can, you can buy it if you go to Total Wine, you can get this. So now I taste this wine. Mm. Oh, and your mouth goes just dry. The tanning I can feel here on the top of my, uh, along my, uh, gums on the on the top of my mouth there and it's quite dry but the tannins are soft they're not harsh some wines you get they're very uh they make your lips pull all the way back this is very, very nice this has got a, this is a quite a fruity wine it's got a, some good balance of acid in here and it's also got that fruit character in there as well with that little bit of plum tobacco and the, the length of this wine is probably a medium length. It's, it's, not, it's quite a nice wine. Now they blend Pinotage with a few wines as well, like Cabernets and Shiraz. So if you're going out and you're drinking a, a wine, you can, you can say this wine is ruby. It's got great legs on this wine. It has a lovely aroma of tobacco, cedar, a little bit of ripe plum. And on the palate, it has this wonderful acidity and it's got a good balance. So you're looking at the balance between the acid, the alcohol and the fruit. So you want, don't want one overpowering the other. Otherwise, you've got a wine that's in balance. So th this is a very nice wine. Now, the last wine I've got is a rosé yes so here's the rosé and uh this is for all all the mothers and i think my mum's watching this so happy mother's day to my mum who's tuned in all the way from new zealand so she's probably there giggling away looking at me and uh so on i'm on I'm, I'm going to celebrate this with her virtually so here's my wine now for this this wine i need a different type of glass i need a sparkling wine or a champagne glass. So I've got a glass that is uh, a little bit taller so I can see the bubbles in here. Now, this wine is an Italian. 
an Italian uh, wine from uh, Veneto in Italy. So it's um, uh, from the Prosecco region. So, um, but the grape is a Pinot Noir and they have taken, uh, uh, they picked the Pinot Noir and they've left the, the uh, uh, seeds and the skins on for a short period of time, then they've taken it off. Then there's a whole different process to go through to make it sparkling, which we haven't got time to discuss, but we can do it at a later date. Maybe that may be another opportunity to talk about sparkling wines. So now, undo the catch from here. Now you'll find that all your sparkling wines, no whether whether they are uh, the Prosecco or they are the uh, Champagne or they're just ordinary sparkling wines, they'll have a cage and a cap on the top. Now, you need to be very careful about opening these because you don't want it to uh, damage and hurt someone. So. Always have a cloth nearby and never open the bottle by aiming it at, at um, anybody. I'll aim it at Chris uh, just to make sure that it gets, uh, gets out. So there's a, there's a wee uh, catch on the side here. So how many turns? Did I hear three? Did I hear five? There are six turns on this. So if you're at a one night and you want to have a bet with someone you can say I can tell you how many turns there are on this uh, sparkling wine bottle and pick a nice champagne or something you know or something like that or Bollinger would be lovely and then and then uh, say that there are six now there are six one two three four five and six always six you take off put your thumb onto the cork yes now when you open this one, the best thing to do is hold a cloth over the cork and then twist the bottle. So, so you have the bottle in your hand and you twist the bottle. Now, as you're twisting the bottle, you always have to smile. Okay. So, and then the cork, <laughs> the cork will come off like that. Amazing. All right. And then is your sparkling wine. Now, obviously, it's all going to bubble up first of all. You do your first pour, let that settle, and then you do your second pour. Okay, now. And that, now you can see all the bubbles going up and up and up in this, yes? <laughs> <laughs> can you see all the bubbles? There you go. So, so this is for all the mothers that are out there, and especially my mum, who um, I love dearly, and uh, uh, I miss everyone back in New Zealand. And uh, so, Happy Mother's Day! Um, and I'll, we'll taste this one. Now, in this, when you taste this, you'll get this mousse. They call it moussiness that goes in your mouth. And when you move it around, it'll explode in your mouth. Mm. So, mm, this one here is quite refreshing. The acidity level is high again, and then we've got this lovely strawberry red fruit character that comes through this, very much so, and a wee bit of sweetness on the palate. So uh, it's, this is a very nice uh, wine to, to have on Mother's Day. Um, and it's, uh, it says extra dry, it's a brute, it's a rosé, and, and make sure you have this wine very cold as well. Um, and the alcohol level is, um, I think it's only about 11% alcohol. So um, it's, it's always sparkling wines are a little bit less than alcohol. So, So what you'll find is that um, uh, the information I've given you on your PowerPoint, each of those different wines, you'll see that if it's a uh, unripe grape, you've got a white wine, you've got this more acidity. When it gets riper, you've got a uh, more of a tropical fruit character that comes out. And uh, with red wine, it depends on whether it's going to be wines that are plummy or are they uh, with black fruit, red fruit, all sorts of things. So we're, we're, we have lots of different wine classes here at the, uh, 
at the university that will be delighted to uh, have you to come to as uh, not so much uh, uh, to, to just to improve your knowledge, I think is the main thing. You don't have to be sitting in an exam at the end of it, but be delighted to see you here. Now, the other thing I'd like to show you is when you are, and I've got a little setting of a table here, when you're setting up for your uh, Mother's Day uh, tomorrow, because you're all social distancing and doing everything. So um, because your white wine is usually drunk first, the white wine goes, the glass goes down first. Then the red wine will be. Now, if you notice that the wine glasses are always in line with the knife. So they're always on your right hand side. So uh, a little tip that I always have, because sometimes if you see this table is quite long and you're sitting at a long table with 10 people, six people, and you've got a bread and butter plate and you've got your wine and you've got your water glasses, and you're not too sure which is yours because you're sitting in the middle. What you do is you hold your fingers up like this and you've got uh, a B and a D, you know? So, um, so here we've got um, D on our right side for drinks and B on our left side for bread. So if you just keep that in mind, so when I'm sitting in the middle, I'll be able to know which is mine. Because sometimes I've gone to different events and the person next to me is starting drinking my wine or eating my bread. So uh, if you keep that in mind, B and D, that helps a lot. So um, we've got our wine above our knife on the right hand side and uh, you've got white wine then red wine. Okay, so now, are there, so Candice, are there any questions at all? No questions just yet, Murray. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask Murray? Are there any? Um, someone wants to know what is the varietal on the sparkling wine? What is the what? Varietal. Well, the, the, the varietal is a, a Pinot Noir. So it's a Pinot Noir grape that they used here. Pinot Noir, yeah. So Pinot Noir. So, so they've used this, it's from the uh, uh, Veneto region. So um, you'll find that uh, uh, the, uh, the grape is a, uh, it's a, they use Pinot Noir in the making of champagne as well. Uh, and they lightly cr uh, press it to get the uh, white uh, grape juice out. And then even though Pinot Noir is a uh, red skin grape, uh, they lightly press it to get the white juice out and then they then ferment the white juice. So, uh, but with this one, what they do is they add these uh, skins and a few of the uh, skins into the uh, maceration to give you that color, but they only do it for a few hours. So it works like that. Most um, uh, rosé wines, do that process. There's another uh, single uh, different process of, of bleeding out the the uh, the wine as well, but that, that's another story, a little bit more complex that'll come to that. Mark Lucas would like to know what are the grapes in the Pinotage? For, sorry, say that again? Grapes in the Pinotage. For the grapes in the Pinotage? Uh, the, the Pinotage grape is, this is it, it's the Pinotage. The Pinotage is the grape. So um, uh, the, it's, a cross, it's a cross between uh, Pinot Noir and Sanso. And uh, the, uh, uh, those are two grapes that were crossed in South Africa many years ago. And, and they then had this varietal called Pinotage. And uh, you'll see Pinotage uh, as a standalone grape. You know, it's its own, its own varietal. The uh, grape that went into the, the Vouvray was Chenin Blanc. And, and that's a lovely, uh, a lovely um, uh, wine. I think uh, you'll enjoy this wine because it's a little bit um, off dry. It's not dry. It's a little bit of sugar, a little bit of residual sugar added into there. So it's quite good as well. And then um, the last one, or the first one, was the um, Sauvignon Blanc. And that's the great variety, Sauvignon Blanc. So I tried to get wines that had single grape varieties to make it easier for you to follow. So when you go out for uh, an evening tomorrow, next week, next month, when we all get back to some form of normality and you start thinking about 
uh, wine, think about what you are eating and try and pair things up together. So you want wines that are not overpowering the, the food. So if you're going to have fish, light foods, chicken, salads and that, you go for a lighter style of wine. And that can be uh, your uh, Vouvray in this case, or your Sauvignon Blanc, or even your Rosé. If you're not too sure, Rosé goes with most things anyway. Chardonnay, Chardonnay I find that here in the US, they, they do tend to oak it a little bit too much. That's just my preference. Um, I don't like oaks, too many oak Chardonnays. I prefer to have something from Chablis, which is a wee bit more uh, steely, a bit more acidic. Uh, but that's my palate we talked about before about being uh, tolerant or less tolerant to different grapes. And as, as, as you uh, start to taste wines, you get um, a different complexity and feeling within in the grape that you're looking for. So um, the, 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 the wine opener that you've got here, you can buy these at any shop. You know those ones that you have with the handles and everything? You don't really need those. The, these... These will do a, a great job, you know, so um, you can buy them from Total Wine, you can buy them from any uh, wine outlet, um, and they have uh, th those sections on there. And they're very easy to keep in, in your pocket. They, they always told me that uh, uh, if you're, you're, you're uh, traveling as a single man, always have a wine opener with you. I thought, okay, so I, I always carry a wine opener in my baggage somewhere, because you never know when you might need it. So um, I think we'll, we might end there, Ca uh, Candice, if there's nothing else. But remember that next week, uh, you've got Mark Steele. And uh, he's going to be uh, uh, talking about uh, mixology. And he's got uh, someone who's going to be uh, working with him. And that looked fantastic, you know. So uh, what he's going to do next week. And uh, I hope to bring other wine tastings to you. But today was just the fundamentals of wine. Going through, looking at the wine, and then smelling the wine, and then tasting the wine. And then not just taking the wine in your, in your, in your hand and then drinking it. You've got to really enjoy it. And uh, the other thing that, um, while I've got you here, you've got a wine glass, hold it by the stem. Don't hold it around the glass itself. Your body heat will heat the wine up far too much. Hold it by the stem. This is what the stem's for. And uh, it'll keep the, you'll keep your wine at the right temperature. So, so from here at the Marriott Kitchen uh, at the Hospitality Hall at UNLV, I wish you a happy Mother's Day, a good night, and uh, I wish you all the best in the, in the coming future. Good night. Thank you, Murray. And Karen, would you like to pop back on and take us away? Thank you so much, Murray. That was phenomenal. How exciting was that, everyone? And thank you also to Chris, our cameraman. So that was a wonderful, uh, like Murray said, preview of what's to come um, in our um, new series. Salute, prost, cheers. And um, before ending today, I definitely need to give a really big shout out to Candace and to Maggie, who have done all the hard work and, and all the legwork. So, so um, thank you, just thank you. There's really nothing else to say besides thank you, you're amazing. And thank you to Murray and Chris. And yes, so this is just the beginning. This is just the first week. So this will be we weekly for us. So our upcoming event, May 15th, Cook Like a Rebel, uh, episode three, Crab Cakes with Chef Scott um, Pajak. And then the next day, We've got another salute, prost, cheers, a cocktail hour with Mark Steele and Amanda Kohler. So the link is below, www.unlv.edu.hospitality slash events, all of that fun stuff, slash hospitality slash events. So go there, sign up, stay engaged, keep an eye out from all the emails and social media that we're going to uh, be be kind of pummeling you with because this is definitely the time for all of us to stay engaged, support each other, and um, and be that that hospitable group that that we all want to be. So so cheers to all the mothers out there and have a great night. Follow us, yeah, follow us and take your pictures, put them on social media at those hashtags hashtag um, UNLV hospitality and UNLV hospitality alumni. It's great stuff. Thanks, you guys. 
Have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.